from hiking volcanoes to diving under the sea, watching sunrises and sunsets. Today we are in Indonesia. So yeah, we are here spending our last nights here in Bali before flying to our next destination. And we're gonna share with you, uh, we wanna share with you of our experiences, what we have been doing here in Indonesia in general. So stay tuned and let's go. We are Christian and Emily, and we are Couple Nomads. This is our story of how we quit our jobs to travel the world. So we started our Indonesian journey in the capital of Jakarta. We came here, or we went there, uh, with a flight from Singapore. Uh, uh, we stayed in Singapore for two days. Uh, we didn't like it much, so we don't know much about it. We did all the touristic stuff, uh, walk around the downtown, uh, bay, the gardens by the bay, and, and those things. And, and you can basically do everything in two days, but we don't have a video about it. As we said, we didn't really like it. Yeah, we didn't like it. We feel like it's very similar to Dubai vibe. Uh, a little bit less fancy than Dubai, but it's all man-made, artificial. I couldn't see like the Singaporean culture at all. It was like different nationality. Um, Maybe if you go a little People bit were like out. super busy or rush in the CBD and all these parts. Uh, we didn't like it much. No, we just felt like we wanted to get away from that after spent so many years in Dubai. So we took a flight to Indonesia with AirAsia. We had a bad experience, not very bad, uh, but yeah, we want to share it with you. We supposed to take our flight at 1 p.m. in the afternoon and the flight got delayed and they, they didn't communicate well in between the airline staff and the airport staff so people were a bit confused if the plane was on time or not so we arrived on time and we had to wait six hours in the airport to take our flight here to Indonesia it wasn't that expensive it cost us probably like 90 US dollars per person to fly to Jakarta but it's just like the experience we want to share with you so in the future if you book with Air Asia just make a web be aware that these kind of things can happen, you know? I mean, it's, it's for sure going to happen, not only once, but more times to us during our two-year around-the-world journey that we're on. But it wasn't the worst airport to get stuck at, because Singapore Airport is voted one of the best ones in the world, so yeah, it was okay. We went to the Vortex, we went to all the, the butterfly garden and walk around the shops, and it's a big, big, big airport. Uh, yeah, wasn't that bad to get stuck. So many people who come to Indonesia, they usually skip all the rest of the island on Indonesia um, and they decide to go to Bali. But I want to highlight the island of Java. It's like the, that's the main island where the capital of Jakarta is. I, I think it's kind of like a, an adventure island. So we spent the first night in Jakarta, the capital. We didn't like it much because it's uh, very polluted. There is so much traffic. So if you do come to Jakarta, we recommend just stay as short time as possible. And try to stay as, as, as far away as much as you can from the streets because the streets can be very loud at night. Yeah, we were struggling to get a good night sleep because our hostel was just right next to a big road and it was just beeping and traffic noise the entire time. Eventually, Christy was like, just give me my headphones, I'm going to listen to music. So yeah, we we do recommend you to maybe come here and see the experience, see how it is. There are some cool restaurants around there. Uh, we went to this Japanese restaurant that was like, when we check it in Google reviews, it was like five out of five. I was like 400 reviews. So we were like, oh, that's... That's very unusual. That must be good. So we decided to go there and you end up being a, a Japanese experimental cuisine. We also tried the most expensive kind of coffee in the world, the Kopi Luwak. Uh, it's produced from coffee beans, which have been partially digested by the Indonesian palm civet. You drink the most expensive coffee in the world. Sure. 
I'm gonna win dollar bills. We also use the time here in Jakarta to do some shopping because there are lots of malls that you can go around to. So we found some very local where you don't see a tourist kind of mall and everything was really cheap and some stuff that we needed. After that, we took a train to Chokia Karta. Uh, that's, um, it's, uh, six hours train ride. So our goal is to get from Jakarta all the way across Java Island to the border of the Bali Island. So the tickets class are going from AA down to J and we read online that it's better to sit in the back of a train and the people that work they just confirmed yeah it's better to sit in the back of the train because it's quite noisy in the front so we thought we booked the most expensive ones which was AA so that we're sitting in the back we were wrong we're sitting right in the front first carrier next to the locomotive it's probably gonna be quite noisy and the ones in the back were apparently a little bit cheaper so when you book look for the ones that are with a higher letter like J so on the ticket it says that you have to be here an hour before. No, you don't. So it's just us on the train an hour before. With the second stop in that way is uh, Jogiakarta. Uh, so when we arrived there was a weekend and was kind of some festivities going on in the town, in the city. So all the main attractions, monuments, they were closed. They're they have the biggest uh, Buddhist temple in the world, but we didn't have the chance to go because it was closed. Yogyakarta is a nice place to visit. It's a cultural experience. We wanted to check it out. We booked two nights initially here, but after spending just a few hours in the city, we uh, changed our minds. And changed the ticket of the train for the next day. And guess what? It was for free. It took me anything. Yeah, you just go to the train station and type in your booking number in the machine. Take this for free, which was fantastic. Yeah, and we... if you want to book train, so you can find the link. Uh, we them online. Before leaving Yogi Akarta, we tried the famous coffee joss, which is coffee sugar poured with hot water and topped with a piece of hot charcoal. On the street near the palace, we met an old man that had been preparing coffee joss for forty years in the same spot, and it was such a cool and down-to-earth experience chatting with this guy. So we short our time in Yeri to Jakarta and then we start our train ride to Provolingo. That is a not very popular place to go. We stay in a hostel called Happy Place. Uh, we booked with them uh, the entire experience of Mount Romo, uh, the Egyptian volcano that we're going to talk later in this video. It included Mount Romo transfer, transfer from Probolingo to the next cities, and also one night hotel, two breakfasts, and also Mount Egyptian transfer, transfer to the ferry forest, ferry over to Bali, and then a bus ride to. Where if you think it. about it, that's so much value for money for just $48. Yeah, so hold on to your hat. We're going to go on a very fast adventure. Over the next 36 hours, we are going to do two hikes in the middle of the night and have basically maximum five hours Worst of sleep. Later. So we arrived with the train at, at 7 p.m., 8 p.m. We didn't know that this whole Brown Mount promo tour started in the middle of the night. But we managed to get like, I don't know, two, three hours sleep. <laughs> but by the time we went to Bromo, uh, there was a fire in the just at the entrance of Mount Bromo. Apparently there was a wedding happening at the time. And... Uh, they were throwing some fireworks and then they make a big fire near the volcano and that's why it's not wasn't possible to go to the actual volcano so instead of that we went to a viewpoint of mount bromo so this sunrise experience uh basically yeah we got picked up by at 2 a.m 
drove through the mountain and the driver drove as far up as he could on the mountain. And then we had to walk the rest, which is basically the stairs to a viewpoint. Took, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes to get up. Yeah, very steep. Yeah. And then it was just pitch black. So bring your headlights or your phone lights. Make sure you bring something to cover yourself as well because it's so cold. It was there. freezing cold. And uh, I know when you think about Bali, you think it's sunshine and and blue skies and beach but here in this part of indonesia it's a bit colder because it's very high in the mountain so this mount promo sunrise the sunrise was incredible to to witness and to see it come up and light on bromo volcano was was incredible it was definitely worth it yeah definitely worth the price definitely worth the time and the experience and after that, we, we went to have breakfast because the breakfast was included in the experience and the package. So after the breakfast, we went back to our hostel. Uh, we went to pick up our bags and start moving to the next city. It's called Ban Juangi. And um, it's just near the port where you take the ferry going to um, Bali. So the mini van that we took it took like seven hours to get there and we had an hour break in the middle for lunch. But we, again, arrived really late, like at 6, 7 p.m. No, maybe late. Yeah. We just went out for dinner and then, around yeah. the corner and then went to sleep because we got picked up at 1 a.m. Yeah. Midnight. 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 Yeah. So then we went to the Asian volcano. Uh, that was such a cool experience. Uh, they pick you up at midnight and then they take you up at the beginning of the uh, hiking trail. And you go with a, a group of people, like a, a big group of people, but you have different guides with you during the ascent. So if you are not very experienced or you are not very fit and like you us. are a bit slow like us because we stop a lot, you well, can... Uh, the beginning of it is so steep. Like the first... An hour and a half, it's literally like 30 to 45 degrees angle uphill, like yeah. non-stop. So you get exhausted. Make sure that you wear proper clothing because it is freezing cold. It's colder than Mount Bromo because here you go four to four to up. They sell beanies and gloves uh, at the base and we actually recommend to buy that, I mean, you don't have to get it if you don't want to, but definitely recommend it to have gloves. If you're gonna go down to the crater, it's gonna be very dusty and it's good to have gloves on because you will have to climb with your hands. Yeah, and so when you go to the top of the mountain. It's pitch black, by the way. Yeah, pitch yeah. Black. yeah, when we went uh, ascending to the mountain, it was all completely black. You have to bring your own uh, torch or they give you a torch. They provide you also a gas mask. They create that is a sulfuric acid smoke coming out of the of the rocks. And it's very unhealthy for us. They give you a gas mask, but do you make sure that your gas mask is fully functioning when you get it at the base? Because mine actually wasn't. Well, obviously, I had no idea how a gas mask functioned and if it was working or not. I just assumed that it is. But apparently, it was missing a piece on the side. So the filter, so the all filter. the air, yeah. I just was breathing when I was down in the crate. I was just breathing in this, this, this smoke and it was just damaging my lungs. I could feel like I was just coughing, coughing. I couldn't breathe properly. Yeah. And you're like, well, well, you just didn't seem to be as bothered as me. And then yeah. after I realized, well, my mask wasn't really working. Yeah, so, but you don't have to go to the crater if you don't want to. They give you the option at the top if you want to go down to the crater. It's going to take you probably another an hour, another hour to go down there. Yeah, um, yeah, 45 minutes each. And you will That's see... It's half quite about. You have something to drink. <sighs> I need a salt water. <sighs> Whew, we made it. <sighs> that was horrible. Horrible. <sighs> Is it worth going down to the crater to see the blue flame? It, well, it's the only time that you will have to see a blue flame in your life, probably. So you have to get there before sunrise. So the other question is, is it worth going before sunrise? Because this tour that we did is to go there for sunrise and to go down before sunrise so that you can see the blue flame, which we did see, which was incredible, but you can only watch it for like 
two, three seconds because there's so much smoke coming at that point where yeah. the blue flame is. So you cannot watch it for long and you can barely see anything. And then you have to go back again, hiking from the crater to the top of the mountain for another hour or so. To be fair, uh, it was the hike, is, the hike is beautiful. It's all memorable. You are in the clouds when you are there in the mountain. And it's definitely it's one an of experience. my memorable hikes. Yeah, but you don't have to do it and sacrifice sleep and, and deprivation of food, all of that. Have a good night's sleep, good breakfast, and start doing it early in the morning. But I think the sunrise is, is definitely an adventure. Yeah, definitely an adventure. If you feel that you can do it, yeah, do it. Definitely do it. And you can get If you are early. not fit, as we said before, you can do it in the day. You can do it very early in the morning or like after breakfast and get some energy drinks or like a protein bar. It will help you. Make sure you bring a lot of water uh, and bring some snacks as well. Yep. Cool. And then the descent was obviously a lot easier because it's basically just going down. And then taking... A bit slippery, yeah. so make sure you bring good shoes or be ready to fail a few times on the way back down. It will be a bit fast, but just be careful the way down. And wear clothes that you are not so precious about because they will smell like sulfur. For a few days and after laundry a few times. Yeah. Yeah. And then we got back to our hotel for a breakfast. A breakfast, a shower, and then go to the port where we took our ferry to go to the island of Bali. We took the bus, it dropped us in Ubud where we had uh, booked our, our next experience and we sort of find Ubud and Bali extremely busy. Extremely busy. It's just all mental, mental. Like so many motorbikes, so many tourists. So like, much traffic. You don't see you don't see many locals at all. It's the majority of the people are just expats living there or traveling there. We feel like the culture there is just kind of disappearing right now. Yeah. And it's a very overrated destination. It is, but one thing that you can do, and you probably see it online a lot, is to rent a really nice villa with a pool for a good price. So we did that. Yeah, we found this good deal in Airbnb. $60 a night for a two bedroom villa with pool. Yeah, $60 a night for a... <laughs> so with four people, it's only $15 per person, person. per night. Yeah. So we stay in our in the villa with our friend Alina, and um, we just decide to don't do any touristic stuff while we were there. Instead of that, we just put our own drinks and play some music in the villa, go for dinner at night, and visit some few other bars at night. Yeah, after our thirty-six hours adventure with two uh, sunrise hikes, we we needed some relaxing time. We went to a bar, a, a reggae bar in one of the main streets in Ubud, and uh, we met some locals, very, very cool, kind locals. And apart from that, we just didn't do much. And then after that, we just... Escape Valley. Uh, yeah, after that, we just took our bags and then we went to the Gili Island. This is one of the highlights of, of our trip. We went there to stay two, three, four nights. Yeah, and, and then we ended up staying two weeks. We ended up staying two weeks in the island in Gili. Uh, we just love it so much. Gili Islands is made out of three islands. You got Gili Trawangan, which is the most, the biggest and the most famous one. You that's got, where we stayed. That's where we stayed. And we had, you have Gili Menno, which is uh, called the Honeymoon Island, which is basically just uh, resorts where you stay and don't leave. And then there's Gili Air, which is the, the middle brother, uh, which is a bit mixed of resorts and budget options and white sandy beaches and yeah. some restaurants and bars too. Uh, in, in Gili Tramongan, you have the chance to have a little bit of the experience of the backpacker area in the main BC road. Uh, where all the bars and all the restaurants are and you also have calm, calmer areas more like in the west side where no many tourists stay uh, so if you fancy uh, a night out there are so many bars with so many deals 
down there in the main street. Um, also many good restaurants, but if you want a calmer one, you can also stay in this side of the island. Also in the, in the exile where we stay, they do a party every Tuesday um, until late at night. And But every evening, it's the best sunset spot and they have a local resident DJ that is just amazing. He plays like soft electronic tune. They pass and then at the, at, as soon as the night starts to come, he starts to evolve the music and make it more like a techno underground place. Uh, and it's and very the, interesting and cool. And the exile team make a bonfire and then later in the evening they, they always bring out the their drums and, and the guitars. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, the, you see the spirit of the people. It's just unreal, unreal. We had the chance to stay in a place called the Exile. It's located in the west coast of the island. And we even were thinking to do maybe stay in a Gilead or Gili Manor for a few nights, but we just like our place so much in Gili uh, Trawangan, the Exile, and we just decided to stay there. Yeah. We had the chance to share with the locals who work there and live there, and spend as well a full moon uh, party with them. Uh, Emily was a bit sick, and during those days so the boys kept me company while Emily was staying at home yeah so I got sick I got food poisoning and we called the island doctor who treated me luckily we have a travel insurance with Genki uh, it's a great travel insurance for nomads like us they cover every country in the world and you pay monthly so you can cancel anytime we had to pay directly to the doctor about 5,500,000 rupiah, which is around $350, and claim the amount back from Genki, which was actually super easy to submit everything online from my phone, and we got our money back within a few weeks. So if you're looking for a reliable travel insurance, we do recommend Genki, and we have an affiliated link in the description below. So if you use that link, we will get a small commission, which will help us to continue creating travel content. And you still pay the same amount. If you have the chance to do a snorkeling tour that they sell there in the island, they pretty much will take you to the tree island and do a snorkeling around there. And if you want to buy some lunch, they will take you to one of the islands to have lunch and you will have the chance to experience it. The, the snorkeling tour wasn't that expensive. We pay ten dollars, ten dollars per person, including a GoPro. It was a great deal, but the, the snorkel itself wasn't what we enjoyed about it. The snorkel experience wasn't that great. Like the corals weren't that alive, and, and, they, it, was and it was so overcrowded. many tours, so overcrowded. many people, and they wanted to see these statues, and you can see how many people are just here at the same time. But the highlight of this tour was to visit the other two islands, so Gilimeno and Gilead. Yeah. Other things to do here in Gili Island, if you do like diving, we do recommend you to, to book or go to check out the um, Gili Trawangan Diver Shop. Uh, they were, uh, that's what we did, our open water course. and. Then, to be fair, it was a very good experience. Uh, that was a very professional company. We, they provide a, a restaurant in this on site, uh, rooms on site. They have two pools for guests and uh, people who do the training for diving. Yeah, it was uh, a very good dive shop, dive school, and very organized. Um, on the island, you find a lot of dive shops. If you are looking to do your open water course or any other course here, they have mostly SSI, but a few paddy schools around. So Travangan Dive is one of the paddy certified Yeah, schools. if you're looking for paddy certified courses, I do recommend a Gili Travangan Divers. We went to um, to visit some of our friends of friends that uh, they are they own a place called Mr. Bean in uh, Gili Travangan. They have a, it's kind of like a beach stand. So they sell beers and coconuts and local drinks, and you can just kind of hang out with them. They have uh, bean bags, bean bags, and you can just like chill out there for the day or go visit them at night and have a chat with them. It's, it's just incredible. They make you feel like at home in that place. Yeah. So if you ever go to Gili Trawangan, go check out uh, Mr. Bean and say hello to Dr. Holiday and Dr. Feelgood. 
they are two guys who works there and very kind people and yeah, definitely recommend it to go. Something very unique about Gili, which we really, really appreciate, is that there are no motorized vehicles allowed on these islands. Instead, they have horses and carriers that transport goods and people around the island, which is really, really cool and also just feels so much more natural and there's no pollution. It's just, I, I love it. Yeah, we really enjoy it. Also, you can rent a bicycle and, and go around the island and just keep it with you all the time. Even when you go at night for a few drinks, you can just park it and tie it to a post or like a biking um, place. There's so many spots for parking bikes in there. Yeah, and a bike costs around $2 a day, like 50,000 rupiah, so it's quite cheap. Yeah, that's not a bad deal. So now we're going to talk about why we choose Gili more than Bali. First of all, the people. The people that you can see in Gili Island, you see locals and foreigners and everyone is just integrating together in the community and people are very happy, very kind and very peaceful. Uh, instead in Bali, what we saw was a big crowd of tourists, few, few other locals and then sometimes when you are in the streets in Bali, you don't feel that safe because you see people looking at you, trying to find a way to take advantage of you or try to steal you. That's very common in some areas in Bali. Um, the second reason is the non-motorized vehicle route on the islands. Like it just having horses to transport or bicycles instead of the motorized vehicles that are in Bali, where just there's so much traffic and beeping and uh, it's, it's just so much more calmer feeling. So the, the third point is uh, the water. The water here in Bali, as you can see right here, is very, uh, well, kind of dirty in some areas. But instead, when you go to the Gili Island, any of the three of them, any beach you go, any beach around the island is crystal clear blue and so many corals alive that you can see when you go snorkeling. Yeah, and you can be on the beach and spot turtles pretty much anywhere. Yeah. So we hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you do so, please don't forget to hit the like button. And if you want to continue to follow our journey around the world, because next we are flying to Philippines, don't forget to click the subscribe button. So you keep up to date with all our videos and if you have any comments, if you think we're missing something or you have any questions, please just write it down in the comments and that we are happy to answer any of the questions and as well, if you want to share Anything that we miss for our other fellow travelers want to do it, happy to do it. And see you guys next time. Let's go dive into the We don't the need the past our lives for tomorrow. Never see the end of the night for sorrow. What do we do to love? What do we do to love?